Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Have you noticed that we are more productively distracted than ever before in our society? And I say productively. We're so distracted in a world that does such a great job with entertainment. It does, it does such a great job with keeping us so consumed with social media. Now, I'm not saying that those, those things are evil or wicked. They can be, but they, they, they are meant, honestly, to distract us from the things that we need to do. This world is never going to draw you closer to God, or is it? It's not. This world is not going to be on CNN. Hey, let's all wake up this morning and pray. That'll be a miracle when that happens, right? It's not going to happen. So the spirit of this world is, is going to find ways to distract you from the very divine purpose and plan that God has for your personal life, for your family, for your marriage, for your children. The enemy comes to distract. As a matter of fact, Satan is the master of distraction. And if you don't believe that, read your Bible. The Bible says that Satan is the God of this world. He didn't say he's the God of you. He's the God of this world. And so there's this world that we live in that constantly is drawing our attention to be distracted from ever coming to the true knowledge of Jesus Christ. And that's something that every single one of us, whether you're someone that's here for the first time and you're just like, hey, man, I'm not even a church goer. I'm just hanging out here because my friend promised me free lunch. I don't know. But one thing I am saying is this, distractions is an opportunity for everyone. And I don't care how many years you've been saved. You could, you could be someone sitting here today, and you've been walking with Christ for 25 years. I've been walking with Christ for 22 years. And let me tell you something. In my 22 years, there have been seasons where I was distracted, even with good things that were never meant from God. Because how many know not everything that, that's good is God? Okay, so listen today, stay checked in and pay attention. Tell your neighbor and say, I'm feeling that. Yeah. What does Satan do? He keeps us distracted from growing in Christ. He, he keeps us distracted from forgiving people that hurt us. He keeps us distracted with our emotions, our pain, our suffering. Those are all normal emotions that we all experience in life. But if not careful, those emotions can distract you for the rest of your life. And so the enemy, see, everything starts with a pure emotion that God gave us. And then Satan comes in and he takes an opportunity and he begins to twist that emotion. And then you live there for too long and you're distracted with pain and suffering Satan wants to distract us with not forgiving people. He does these things. He works on this stuff. He keeps you distracted from your, your holy purposes on this earth. But how many know, and I say a big but, because but just erases everything I just said. But Jesus keeps you grounded. Jesus keeps you rooted. Jesus keeps you focused. Jesus keeps you determined. Jesus keeps you fighting the good fight of faith. That's what Jesus does. And how do, how do I stay focused in 2019? Because I'm not here to tell you uh, to deny distractions. You can be reading your word and praying every single day. And let me tell you something. Distractions will never go away. Have you ever been reading your Bible and then you get a text or a phone call? And you're like, you know, God, I'm going to give you these next 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Read. And then, of course, right when you're trying to put your focus on him, there's a distraction that comes, right? And once again, it can be something cool, you know, as, or sweet, as wonderful as your little kids. They come in, mommy, 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 while you're reading your word. And you're just like, oh, and you just got distracted from reading the word. Or you got distracted from praying. And so are they the enemy? No, but they are a little ankle biter sometime, huh? Everybody say, I can I will. Let me, let me, God, that's what God spoke to Elevate Church for 2019. He said, this is the year where you're going to have the spirit of I can, I will, the end. And if you're not careful, you can be distracted with this whole I can, I will, the end as something cute. Like, oh, isn't that cute what Pastor came up with? I can, I will, the end. And, and not really realize that that's a prophetic word for your life. 
It's a prophetic word for your family. It's a prophetic word for the church. God is saying this is the year where you will no longer make excuses of why you're not growing deeper in Christ. This is the year where you're not going to make excuses of why you're not stepping in to the plan and the desire that God has for your life. God has so many wonderful things for each and every single one of us, but we're so easily distracted with so many things in this world. I mean, yeah, there's the distraction of things, but there's also the distraction of people. It just takes one person to distract you for a long time. Don't look at your spouse. <laughs> They're yours. But too many of us live with an I can, I will, the end, when I feel like it. This is not the year of I can, I will, the end, when I feel like it. This is the year of I can, I will, the end, whether I feel like it or not. For example, uh, sometimes there's people that wake up in the morning and they're just like, you know, they get hit by the spirit of the, the there's the Holy, uh, Holy Spirit who's the comforter and then there's the holy blanket, right? And, and you're just like, I think the Lord is calling me to the blanket ministry and you just want to stand and you're just not feeling it, right? And you just don't come to church. You know, so it's so easily to get distracted with comfort in the morning and, and you start feeling like, wow, you know, it's okay. I can just watch it on live stream. God bless you if you're watching, you know, afar, which we have people watching from all different parts, Florida, other countries, different places. That's awesome. I love it. North Carolina, you name it. But then there's people that are at home that we get so comfortable because we get distracted with how we feel or don't feel. But this is the year that I'm going to, I can, I will the end sometimes you don't feel like going to work huh if you're wake up in the morning I just don't feel like I don't feel like going to work well you know what this is the year where you're going to cut out the I don't feel like going to work and I'm gonna go to work whether I feel it or not amen God bless that one person he's probably an employer he's like I wish my employees were sitting here today that's a good word I'm gonna send you an offering pastor for that one yeah This is where we have to say, this will be the year where I'm going to do the right thing, whether I feel it or not. I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to tell the truth. Uh, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be straightforward. I'm going to be honest. Uh, but honesty doesn't mean stupidity either, okay? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be someone that's, that's going to do the right thing, whether I'm feeling it right there at that moment or if I'm not feeling it. I'm going to do the right thing. thing. Say it with me, I can, I will the end. And look at your neighbor and say, I'm feeling what he's saying. Yeah, you got to feel it. And you know what? As I was thinking about, okay, how can I really paint a picture of what I'm saying? Because in December, if you remember, we started talking about um, the theme of 2019, which is I can, I will, the end. But we were talking about how do we take those words that God gave us and then how do we make that into application? And then I started speaking to you about um, vision and, and how to set goals properly, you know, because many times we set goals that are, that are uh, um, selfish and there's no God in it, but we want to set both. We want to be able to set goals that, of things that we desire, that we want to accomplish. Like some of you may want to go on vacation to a beautiful place like Holland. There's a lady who's been coming here for a minute. She's moving back to Holland. I'm like, man, that's like the dream vacation, but that's cool. Go to Holland, but we're not, when I'm saying this, when, when do we get focused on our goals and where does Jesus come into the picture in this and uh, and we started talking about vision boards and so so many of us got really excited about the vision board and we started putting pictures of the things we want to accomplish that are God goals that are family goals that are spiritual goals and all these things we started this movement in our church and we said okay once you you place a picture of what you want to accomplish then put a Bible verse that you're going to speak over that you're going to declare over that promise of God and we all got excited and it's kind of like this you come to church and you hear a message like this and we're just like yay and everybody's like woo yes yes and you get stirred up in your heart because you're hearing things of of of, of things that you want to accomplish things that you want to do and you're like finally pastor stirred me up again i got the fire of god back in me i'm gonna do it this year i haven't heard people over and over say pastor there is no way in hell literally hell 
I'm going to repeat a 2018 and 2019. And so they're like, thank you so much for casting vision. Thank you so much. And we have this excitement for two, three weeks. And, and maybe you've been declaring over your vision board. And maybe you've been speaking life over it. And maybe you've looked at it and you said, man, I can't wait. This is going to happen this year. I'm going to start that business. I'm going to lose that weight. Man, I'm going to be a nicer person. I'm going to lead my family this year. I'm going to bring my kids to Christ this year. And we get excited. But how many? Yeah, you can give the Lord a hand clap for that, right? Nothing wrong with that. But the problem is that we start making all these plans of losing weight, of, of attending church more often, being more consistent, more committed. But then two weeks, three weeks go by. It's kind of like, you know, the gym. Everybody signs up for the gym like right around the 31st, right? And they start going faithfully like the first two, three weeks of of, of the year, but come the third, fourth week, let me tell you something, that ministry of blanket ministry gets really heavy. And then you just start cutting it back little by little. And then you go from going four days to three days, from three days to two days, from one day to no days anymore. Why? Because life starts happening, and this is what happens to us. <laughs> Do you know what the church most Christians live like? It's just a ball of excitement. Just excited, excited. We're just so excited. I'm so glad I came to church. This is so awesome. And, but, but, but have you noticed that it's so easy to default back to your old self, your old person. It's so easy to default back to that same old 2018 person who was struggling, who was being challenged constantly, who wasn't growing spiritually, who wasn't growing in their family. And slowly but surely, already on January, what's today's day, the 27th? 28th, whatever. And it's like, man, where's that passion? Where's that excitement? I'll tell you where it's at. It's easy to just be a person filled with excitement, but but have no 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 stability, have no 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 ground. And and so it's just feelings and and it's just an emotion that's leading you every single day. Kind of like worship, right? I love worship. Did you guys enjoy worship today? Worship was awesome. If you didn't like worship, help you, Jesus. And we, you know what? One of my favorite jams, your jam, is um, You Are Good. You like that song? Let's all try this together. Sing this with me. You are good, good. So, yeah, yeah, go ahead. You are good, good. Oh, how about this line? You're never going to let. You're never going to let me. Come on, sing with me. You're never going to let. You're never going to. And it's amazing because we'll be sitting there. We'll sing these songs. And you've been going through a rough week. And it's been difficult. And you come in here and you're like, yes. Yes, God, you are good. Yes, God, you're going to get me through. Yes, God, you're going to deliver me. Yes, God, I can see hope. I can see the cloud the size of a man. I can see that you're doing something. But the problem is that we, we leave everything here. And then we leave. And then by 5 o'clock today, Or you're injected with so much passion and excitement and faith and hope. But 5 o'clock, something happens. You get a phone call and someone has gives you a bare brand news or, or, or you come up Monday morning, you're at the doctor visit and you're doing blood work and, and they come back and they said you have diabetes or whatever. But let me tell you something, that should not determine the focus or the mission of your life. How many of that we serve a God in heaven who can turn things around with your cooperation? He needs God. Listen, God needs his people to be cooperative. All right, so you may be facing that right now. You may be facing pain. You may be facing something difficult, but we must cooperate with God. And when we cooperate with God, God will begin to do amazing miracles. And I get it. I'm not saying deny. Don't deny what you're facing. But come to the realization that the enemy comes and he uses that, that pain or that suffering or, or that challenge, and he'll distract you for too long. There's also things where, you know what, you'll come to church on Sunday like you did today. And you're hearing the word right now. You're like, man, I'm so glad I came to church today. Man, that word was for my wife. 
and you start thinking, man, this is so good, and, and, or podcasts that you listen to, man, it's amazing how much technology and information that we have in this society right now. In our time, man, you don't lack sermons. You don't lack, you know, messages that build you up, whether you're a businessman, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're someone who's in corporate, whether you're someone that's trying to raise and elevate your life. There's so much information out there, but here's what happens. We gather all this information, man, and we're like, man, I got this. I'm going to blow up that business. I'm going to start. Oh, I'm going to take my company to the next level, or I'm going to take my life in the company to the next level, right? But what happens to us? We get excited for a moment. We get happy. We get a little bit of vision. And then all of a sudden you get hit again and the same thing happens. And I think you understand it, right? We live in a culture of excitement and no sustainability. We live in a culture of people that operate solely on excitement and not Jesus. It's just all excitement. It's, it's just all tickle my ears, make me feel good today, Pastor. It happens. There's so much inconsistency in believers. And this happens to all of us. No one gets away with this. Every single one of us are distracted at some point in our life. Unfortunately, some people are still distracted a year, two years, three years, five years, ten years later with whatever it is you have experienced. But today is the day where God's saying, come back. Get your focus back on me. Amen? So we don't want to default back to that old person. We want to, we want to be spirit-led, not feeling-led. God didn't say, be led by your feelings. Don't be led. Listen, your feelings are subject to change. Today, this morning, maybe you woke up like crap. Well, guess what? That is subject to change as you put Jesus inside of you, right? So those feelings, never trust them. Follow your feelings. Especially, don't ever be the person who says, I'm just following my heart. Don't follow your heart. Your heart will lie to you. Remember when you said, I love you. I'll never leave you. Where are they at now? Don't follow your heart. Follow. Follow who? So, so what, what happens to us? Well, let's, let me tell you what Paul said. Paul said this, Galatians 5, 16 through 18. He said, I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall what? Not fulfill the what? Lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary. These don't mix with each other. Another version says it this way, and the two are at war with each other. Do you realize that there's a constant internal battle? Let's just come to that reality. There is a constant internal battle. That should not be a surprise. There's an internal battle inside of you that wants God, but there's also this flesh that doesn't want you to draw closer to God. The Holy Spirit living inside of you is trying, you, is trying to call you, draw you nearer to Jesus while the flesh is telling you, no, nah, we don't need to go to church today. We're good. That's okay. Uh, uh, next weekend. Uh, I'll read my word, you know, uh, tomorrow. And then we become like this Pharaoh tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. And then we lose everything. And so he says, so that, so that you do not, look at this. I love this. So, so he says that there's this war inside of you so that you do not do the things that you what? Wish. I wish I could lose some weight. But pizza keeps taking over. And so there's always going to be this internal battle that is going to draw you further away from what you wish. I wish I could start that business. But your doubts creep in. I, 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 wish, I wish I can be a better wife, a better husband, but your attitude won't change. I wish I can be a better parent, but you're not putting in the work to raise up kids that love God. Are you hearing me? For example, parents, I'm going to hit on the parents for a little bit. Lock the doors, ushers. 
when do parents, when did they get this idea that you ask your children if they want to go to church? Honey, do you want to go to church? No. Video games. Okay, honey, see you later. What the? I'm sorry, who's the parent? What do you mean, do you want to go to church? Now, I get it. Um, If your kid's 30 years old, (laughs) chill. But if your kid is 30 years old and living in your house, oh, you're going to church. (laughs) You want to live here? You want to eat my food? You're going to church. Because you can't even begin to declare what Joshua said. As for me and my household, we will. Well, you can't be serving the Lord as a household and not the whole household is going. Don't get it twisted. Distraction. Man, you better tell that kid, you better get your stuff ready. You know, I will bring the gift of belt out and, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, you're going to church. I'm so thankful and glad that I pushed my kids. My kids spend so much time in church, both of them. They would sleep on the chairs till 1, 2, 3 a.m. because I'm working. I don't regret how many days my kids spend in church. You know why? Because today I get to experience the fruit of all that labor of love and not giving them an option whether or not they can. Do you want to go to church? No. No condemnation, but come on, stop being distracted with that type of parenting. Enough. Then don't start crying when they're 30 years old, 20 years old, 25 years old, and they want nothing to do with God. Not going to happen. Look at your neighbor and say, I think he's talking to me. (laughs) You know what I think one of the biggest problems for us is as a church, as believers, and even, even non-believers that do believe in Christ in the sense of like they believe what Jesus did on the earth. But I really believe that there are so many people that just know the Jesus of mercy. They know the Jesus of grace. They know the Jesus of kindness. They know the Jesus of healing. But I think that if you're not careful, you can become that Christian that you don't mature beyond what Jesus did for you. Listen to me. Don't be the Christian that only focuses on everything he does for you and not look or focus or underestimate the fact that beyond Jesus being graceful, merciful, kind, all powerful, that he was a he was God in the form of flesh, right? And was tempted in every possible way, yet was without sin. So that right there alone, he's saying, Hey, listen, I came in this flesh the way you're living, so that you realize that it is possible to walk in the divine purpose of God. And so as he's walking out this life, what he was teaching us beyond grace, beyond mercy, beyond goodness, is he was teaching us that we are called to be determined and focused. Read your Bible. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Show me somewhere in the Bible where Jesus wasn't distracted by his enemy. He would show up in a town, man, and they, and he, listen, he's ready to preach the gospel and they want to throw him off a cliff distraction he comes to a city and he's wanting to preach the gospel in samaria and what happens the people there they shut the doors on him and james and john his disciples listen it's not just being distracted by your enemy you can be distracted even by your own kind your people who love you your mom god bless my mom there was times when my mom like why are you always going to church mom do you want the old me or do you want the new me? Which one do you want? Because the old me used to call the cops on. When I was a youth, yeah, I'm like, you used to call the cops on me. Is that the old me you want? Or do you want the new and improved me? Because the new and improved me takes work. It takes commitment. It takes follow through. So many of us, we get saved. We get water baptized. We get excited. We sing. But then what happens? Life happens. And you know what happens? You stop coming. Why? Distracted. It takes follow through to be a believer. It takes follow through to be someone that's going to live with God's divine plan. Are you hearing me today? And so, and so man, they, don't, they reject him. And, and even his own kind want to distract Jesus. These are disciples. 
They've been walking with the presence of God every day in the flesh. You and I don't even walk with Jesus. The disciples are walking with Jesus every day. They're seeing like the manifested power of God like in the flesh. Like they get to encounter a miracle, amazing miracles, right? And what happens? The disciples got all ticked off. Man, they got secondhand offense. Distraction. They got offended because they shut the door off to Jesus. And James and John said, hey, Jesus, do you want us to call down fire from heaven like Elijah did? And let's burn them all. Jesus like, are you crazy? That's local. What's wrong with you? He's like, I didn't come to kill. I came to give life. And so sometimes you can be doing something good and be challenged. And the people nearest to you, your nearest kin, can without intention and unintentionally be telling you to get off the mission and distract you with their own feelings. Watch it. Are you, are you hearing me today? Is something sinking in? Don't underestimate that. We need to remember that Satan cannot create, but he can imitate. God is the only one creator. God can create in you a clean heart. God can create in you a steadfast spirit. God can create in you a passion and a desire to live for his divine purposes. But you know what Satan does? He imitates your dysfunction. Have you noticed that all of our distraction is the same? If you really sit down, go home. I double dog dare you. Go home, sit down, open a book, get a pen, and ask yourself this question. Okay, what distracts me from losing weight? Once you identify it, now you know how to attack it. But so many of us never identify the tactic of the enemy because here's the deal. We're too distracted with the pain instead of focusing on the one who can deliver us from that pain, from the one who can deliver us from whatever it is that is holding us back from that change and start doing something about it. But you got to sit down. Satan is not going to come up with a new distraction for you. Whatever you're distracted with now in, in family, in work, you know, in in, in relationships, it's the same thing. There's nothing new. Nothing. Look at your neighbor and say, nada. Nada. There's nothing new. Nothing. Why? Because Satan knows what bait you take. He knows. He knows it's that same ugly little bait with the little skirt on it, right? He knows. He knows how to draw your attention. Jesus constantly had to focus. Think about it. When he was on the cross, he's on the cross, and his mom, his mom, Jesus, get off that cross. What's wrong with you? Yes or no? Get off. She knew who he was. His disciples were saying, get off, Jesus, get off. His enemy was saying, get off. So not only with, will the people you love tell you to stop, but even your enemy will tell you to stop about the same thing. Why? Satan imitates. And what did Jesus do? He said, listen, I'm going to stay focused. He had to tell himself, no, I'm not getting off. As a matter of fact, the Bible says this. He said, if I wanted to, I can call down a legion of angels, and we can just end this right now, and we can put a whoop on their whip. But he didn't do that. You know why? Because he was determined and he was committed to say the words, it is finished. Yeah, amen. That deserves a hand clap. Yeah. Will you say those words when you leave this life? It is finished. Will people remember you for what you left? cars, houses, money for your kids, or will they remember you for leaving God's presence, God's person, or God's power in their life? How will you be remembered? Will you be remembered as a man or woman of God, or will you be remembered for someone who, who took care of the bills? How will you be remembered? Jesus wanted to be remembered with, it is finished. And those words still resound today in the church every single year, every single. It is finished. It is finished. Your healing, it is finished. Your joy, it is finished. Your peace, it is finished. How did that happen? Determination and focus. The enemy comes for your focus. And you have to discover what that focus is uh, or, 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 or distraction is. Because if you don't, it'll, it'll keep you there for a long time.
And we don't want that. We want this year to be an I can, I will, the end. Not what I feel. It's, it's what I'm going to accomplish. Amen? It is finished. How could he even get off the cross if you think about it? How can he take himself off the cross when he's saving you and at the same time try to save himself? But he didn't. It was about you, me. He wasn't going to get off the cross. There's no way he was going to do that. We need to put our eyes back on God's word, guys. Let me read you a verse real quick. Go to Matthew 13, quick. Matthew 13, verse 19. <clears throat> so Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he's, and he's basically letting them know this is what produces focus, and this is what produces distraction. And here's what he says. He says, when anyone hears the message, are you guys hearing the message this morning? Yeah? yeah? yeah. Awesome. I'm excited. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, Okay, now let me, let me be honest with you. I think in this church, we're pretty clear when we preach. It's pretty practical, isn't it? It's in depth, but it's simple. I keep the message simple. I make sure that all of our pastors, that any of our communicators, I always teach them short, sweet, and simple. Don't, don't, don't get all deep, all right? Nobody wants floaties, all right? Simple. We all want to be able to enjoy it. We all want to be able to walk out of here and say, I got that, man. I don't even go to church, and I understand this guy. That's what I like to hear. When people walk up to me and say, you know, I'm not a church person. As a matter of fact, I don't even believe in God, but I like what you said. I'm thinking, dude, can you come up and t share that with my church? It would be amazing just for people to hear your testimony. So there's no such thing. But, but check this out. But, but Jesus is saying, but when you sit down and you're hearing a message and you don't understand it, here's what happens. It says the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in your heart. Listen, please. This is the seed sown along the path. This is the seed sown along your path of life. This is the seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. Let's give a joyful clap. <laughs> All right, now chill. Relax, because look, next verse. But, everybody say but. but. There's a but in this. But since they have no, but since they have no what? If you don't understand what root means, go back to your house, go back to your community, and go look at a tree, and you'll realize, ah, without a root, that tree ain't standing. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. And when trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly what? Fall away. They quickly what? Fall so if you're this consistent emotional roller coaster that is led by your feelings and you're wondering, why am I not growing? Why am I not getting it? Because you have no root in Jesus. It, try to build a huge skyscraper. It ain't going to stand unless it's the same depth as the same height. Not going to happen. You want to go higher? You got to go deeper. Thank you. Verse 22. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries, ever say the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth. Come on. Money, money, money. Honey. Right? Sometimes we can be so selfish, and, and it's just about making money, money. M nothing wrong with money should be a tool. It, it's okay to possess money. It's not okay when money possesses you. Okay, you have to be someone that knows how to be a giver. Be a giver. But the deceitfulness of wealth will choke the word. But look at this, making it what? Unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding a hundred, a sixty, and a thirty. So he's talking about percentages. Come on. He's talking about the measuring stick. And you know what's pretty cool is that it doesn't matter if you're a thirty right now. Guess what? You can you can grow to a sixty. It doesn't matter if you're a sixty. You can grow to a hundred. But every single one of us right now, you're a thirty, sixty, you're a hundred, or maybe you're a zero. But it says, uh, or thirty times what was sown. And so as I started reading this, you could only think about. And I preached this before. It's been probably like five years ago I spoke on this, and I broke down this entire meaning. But let me give you the short version of this real quickly. What is he saying? He's basically saying that there are four types of soils in 
the church. There are four kinds of people. You ready? Number one, look at this. Number one, some people will hear the gospel and won't respond to it, so the enemy snatches the word from their heart because they put no what? You got to pay attention. You can't just come in church and be like, okay, I can't wait till this is done. Well, guess what? Man, the enemy came and took anything you heard today, and it's gone. Second soil. Number two, the person that springs up quickly, they get excited, they sing worship, they get baptized, but when life gets tough, they don't follow through. That's the second soil. We're talking about soils. Soil is you and me. The third kind of person is um, they, they, are, they are consumed, people that are consumed with this world, uh, and, and they focus on things of this world, but then they get choked out. And how many know, have you ever, have you ever and there's nothing wrong with this, like you can, you can want something so bad, right? Like maybe you want a, a brand new boat, a, a brand new place to live, a new house, a new apartment, a new condo, a new tomo, whatever it is, and you know, you're excited. You're like, yeah, it just boils up inside of you. Then you get it. It's kind of like, oh. That feeling's over. <laughs> Why? Because let me tell you something. There's nothing in this world that you can obtain that's going to bear fruit. And eventually, it's sometimes when we're so, like, selfish and we have selfish ambition, it chokes you. It literally chokes you. The blessing is no longer the blessing. We forget. See, everybody wants the gift, but nobody wants the gift giver. And we got to change that. The fourth person is this. It's the person we all want to silently believe that we are. Because right now I'm saying this and we're all thinking, oh, yeah, I'm 100. Praise God. Yeah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm sure he's talking to my kids right now or my spouse. Praise God. Yeah, so we have this silent belief that we're 100%. And I, I, I think that, that what, 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 God is, what Jesus was trying to say was this. Let me just kind of uh, entertain you for a little bit. I really believe what Jesus was trying to say is that, hey, listen, it's not that you're 30, it's not that you're 60, it's not that you're 100. It's that every single one of us have a season in our heart where we are all at some point at a 30, at a 60, or at a 100. In other words, he was saying that this is the condition of all of our hearts in different seasons of our life. But we have the capacity and we have the ability and we have the faith to go from 30 to 60 to 60 to 100. And that is your choice. But you must cooperate with God. You can't just keep being a hearer and a hearer and a hearer and you're not doing anything about it. God wants us to put the work in. What's the work? Get closer to God. Seek God. Find out what is, what's his plan for your life. Have you ever asked yourself? I'm saying, listen, do the desires of your heart. Be a business person. Start a business. Uh, you know, work at the company you desire to. But, but, but where, is, where does God fit in that picture as far as this is what I do for God? All this matters. This is the condition of our hearts. And what happens is it's possible for us to be good soil right now. Like right now, you're receiving it. But by 8 p.m. tomorrow night, I wonder if the enemy came and already snatched it from you and you forgot everything you heard today. It's so easy, isn't it? You know, it's so easy to be people of excitement. You just come to church and just like, I wonder if pastor's going to bring me today. This better be good today. Man, they better play my jams today because, man, I'm, I ain't feeling it. It's true. Christians are just so immature. It's the reality. Hey, I can be immature sometimes. All of us, guys, this is all of us. It's the condition of our heart. But God says, but when you get my word in, and I'll change you. It's so easy to be distracted. It's so easy. Um, let me go quick. Let me skip some stuff because I want to share something with you real quick. Hmm. I've heard people say to me, you know, Pastor, I really need that job. And I said, okay, we're going to pray. And... Um, and we pray for that job, and, and, uh, and it's awesome because I'm able to see someone that had nothing, and they were struggling. I've been through like 10 interviews, and nobody will hire me. We pray, and then God just blesses. It's amazing. But what amazes me often is that it's funny how so many times we'll tell God, God, if you, if you do this, I'll, I'll give you everything. And, 
And then he does it. He does something. He gives you the job you desired. He, he helps you with your family. He, he helps you bring your ch- children back to God. He does so many things. And so, I know that so many of us, we've already forgotten what God has done for us. And then all of a sudden, you went from being this amazing servant of God, this amazing, committed, rooted person in God. And all of a sudden, you just kind of start shrinking back little by little. And I see it's, it's constant in the church. Here's what I mean. People will get the job, they get blessed. And all of a sudden, the blessing becomes more than the blesser. And they start missing church. And, and it's went from, I can't serve anymore. I got to step down. And I, listen, I get it. There's a season where we come into work and we do things. But at what point do we come back and we give God the honor, the glory, and the praise and say, God, I know that this job is difficult, but I know that you're going to make a way. Because you can't be sitting up here singing, he's the way maker, and you don't believe he can make a way. That's faith. 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 Come on, let's stop letting the next crisis distract us. Let's stop letting the next challenge derail us. Let's stop letting the next responsibility distract us from what God wants to do. Let's stop that noise and let's, 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 let's allow the seed of God's word to go deep in our hearts and let it take root so that we can be consistent, so that we can be committed, so that we can follow through with Jesus and not be short span where we're 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 in one moment it's the it's called the go stop christian right you go when you feel it you stop when you ain't feeling it anymore you go when you feel it you stop when you ain't feeling it anymore you come when it's in crisis time you stop when the crisis is over stop that noise we got to stop it and realize that challenges are going to come in this life no matter what you face no matter what good you do it's going to happen for sake of time, let me just end it here. So, the disciples are walking with Jesus, and they've seen firsthand how focused he was. And it's, it's amazing how so many of us are like the disciples. It's so quick and easy to forget what Jesus has done, like I was saying. And so Jesus tells his disciples, hey, let us go to the other side. I mean... Jesus didn't say, hey, let's pray about going to the other side. Hey, let's hope we get to the other side. Um, Hey, uh, let's hope, let's hope that, uh, that, that, that God knows what he was talking about going to the other side. He didn't say that. He said, let us go to the other side. And so everybody got in their boat and, and Jesus got in the boat with them. Do you understand that Jesus wants to get in your lifeboat? And so, of course, they start taking off. They're on their boat, right? You know the story. They're trying to get to their side because on the other side was a man who needed a breakthrough, who needed healing. He was demon-possessed. Jesus was determined. Jesus was focused on another person he was going to touch, another city that he was going to touch, another community that would experience his love, the love of God. And so they get on the boat, and all of a sudden, listen, the moment that you turn your face to your focus... Get ready because the enemy will whip up a storm. Oh, don't say that, Pastor. Oh, I'm going to tell you. He's going to whip up a storm. Why? Because distraction keeps you from knowing him truly. A person will walk in your life. Be wise. All of a sudden, you were single, man. Nobody wanted to date you. You start focusing, serving God. Everybody wants to date you now. It ain't because you got prettier or, or, you know, good looking. No. It's distraction. Uh, man, I'm fine. No, you're not. <laughs> you still you. <laughs> you ugly. The anointing makes you attractive. While God attracts, Satan distracts. And, and they're on this boat, and immediately... The enemy whips up a big storm, and, and they're like, mind you, these are fishermen. These aren't guys that, oh, it's our first time in the lake. Uh, no, this is what they do for a living. They're always out. They're in this storm that is whipped up, a storm they've obviously never seen before because it literally took them by surprise, and they were, they were freaking out and crying and screaming, and the waves and the winds, everything hit, all because Jesus said, let us go to the other side. 
God wants to take you to the other side. God wants to take you to a next level. God wants to take you to a next level in your spiritual walk. God wants to take you to a next level in your uh, life walk, in your work walk, in every possible walk in this life. And he whips up. And you know what happens? The disciples get so freaked out that they forgot that Jesus was in the boat. Obviously, the Bible says, and Jesus was in the, the stern, and he laid his head on the pillow. While the storm was happening, what is God saying? He's saying, hey, listen, in the midst of your storm, I rest. I rest. God's not. <sighs> God's, he's resting. And the disciples, they wake him up, and, and they're like, ah, wake up, wake up. Don't you care about us? Don't you out there? How could you just let us die? How and just like, tell him, what's wrong with you? And he's just like, well, get out of here. And he, and yeah, yeah, he's like, dude, I'm just trying to, I said, we're going to get to the other side. <laughs> and he rebuked the winds and the waves and the seas. And the Bible says that disciples looked and said, oh, my God, even the waves and the winds obey him. It's amazing how the enemy must obey God, but not many Christians obey him. The enemy is more submitted than God's people. Yes? I'm done already. Don't trip. And, and Jesus turns back after he calmed everything down. And you know what he said to them? He said, where is your faith? Where is your faith? And, and I truly believe that faith is the only antivenin for distraction. It's the only thing. Faith. Romans 10, 17 says, and faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. You need to get the seed of God's word back in your life because that seed will produce 30, 60, and 100 fold. Get Jesus back in. Get him back in your boat and watch him get you to the other side. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand clap. Yeah. If today's message impacted you in any way, and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below, and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.